YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back and today I got left tackle rankings we went through quarterbacks running backs receivers tight ends but on the left tackles I took every starting left tackle all 32 starting left tackles we're going to rank them from worst to first we will do the same thing for right tackles next and then we'll continue on there so having a lot of fun doing these rankings Hopefully you guys are enjoying them. Hopefully you can smash that like button, subscribe. Go to that Twitter because once I get done with a video, you guys vote for who the best player at that position will be. Uh, the tight end one is the finals for the tight end. Final voting is going on right now. So we'll continue with that. You're going to want to follow that Twitter. You're going to want to subscribe to both channels. Please help us reach 60K by week one of the NFL. I think we can do it. I think we're easily going to do it. As long as the support keeps coming in, we're going to keep grinding here. Check out that podcast. There's a link in the description comments. Any video for every single video for anything that you need here, Twitter, podcast, whatever. So essentially with these rankings, we're, we're ranking them for the 2020 season. So they're basically predictions. And since we're ranking the starting left tackle every team, we're really ranking teams here, 32 teams, so by their left tackle. So here we go. Tough to predict who will actually start for some of these teams, starting with the Chargers, actually. Uh, Trenton Scott, who's at this moment, tough to tell, hasn't been any practice or anything yet, obviously, training camp, nothing. I'm predicting Trenton Scott to start at left tackle, which could be rough for the Chargers because he played quite a bit last year, and he, and he struggled quite a bit because Russell Okung was uh, injured, of course, and they traded him to the Panthers. Uh, they do bring in Brian Balaga. Uh, there are some people out there that say he could start at left tackle. I, I'm just not seeing it. It's a right tackle. It's a really good right tackle. So we're going to rank Brian Balaga, uh, their new addition, their new right tackle with the right tackles, of course. So left tackle, Trent Scott, um, Pipkins. It could be Trey Pipkins. So it's kind of up in the air. Uh, you know, I'm just – Going Trent Scott because he got the reps last year, but that, that could be their weak spot, that left tackle spot. Redskins, another one. Tough to predict who will start. I went with Jerome Christian, uh, somewhat of a young left tackle out of Louisville, but they br brought in Cornelius Lucas from the Bears, but the Bears' offense line struggled a bit, um, you know, and he doesn't have a whole bunch of experience. They draft Sadiq Charles from LSU. Some think he can, he can pl probably play guard, could probably replace Eric Flowers perhaps. Um, and I can see it. You know, I can see him being a pretty good guard, but he was a really good left tackle for, for the LSU Tigers, who were the best team in the country. Um, so I would look out for him, uh, but still, you know, mid-round pick, kind of young, uh, and they're hoping Christian kind of develop at this point. So I'm going to go. They start Christian at left tackle, and I do have him ranked pretty low because he's got some reps, hasn't looked pretty, still young, hasn't really been in there to get, to get his chance. You know, sometimes these guys need to get in their groove, you know. So he could surprisingly be better in this because there was some hope for him out of Louisville a few years ago. Um, so that's a guy I kind of look out for. Uh, Austin Jackson, the rookie from USC and the Miami Dolphins, I believe he starts at left tackle. They could go Julian Davenport. Right tackle is going to be a big mystery. They draft him. We'll, we'll get to the right tackle video and then the guard video eventually. Uh, they draft Robert Hunt, who was a pretty good right tackle, but I, I really like him at guard, so I think they could put him at guard. But left tackle between Jackson and Davenport, I think they go out Austin Jackson. Uh, they drafted in the first round for a reason. It was a little bit of a surprise, you know, a little early. Um, but I think they go him left tackle. He could struggle early on, but has the upside, of course. 29, Garrett Bowles of the Broncos, kind of known as, yeah, maybe some people are surprised not at the bottom, but, you know, I still think he's better than some of these guys. The problem with him is the holding penalties. I mean, he tends to grab around the neck a lot, I noticed. Uh, but if he, uh, you know, cuts those down, you know, he's not, he's not terrible. He's not terrible. He saw some upside, you know, but uh, the question is, can he cut those down? So, Bulls coming in at 29, could be replaced soon. Uh, Cam Robinson of the Jags at 28, I, I'd, I'd say somewhat inconsistent. You know, one week it looks, looks he looks pretty solid. You know, it looks like that tackle we thought he could be, then, you know, pretty much a disaster one week. So, you know, Robinson, his consistency is the key there still. I think he's on a contract year, so, yeah, uh, big year for him. Mekhi Becton, first-round pick. Again, rookies will be included in my rankings because this is for 2020. It's predicting, you know, this season. We're moving forward here. Uh, Becton at 27. Who I, I like the idea of Becton. I like the prospect, Mekhi Becton from Louisville here. Um, you know, but he could struggle in pass protection early on. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than that, you know, at Louisville offense. Um, a lot of quarterback, you know, run, design runs and, um, you know, whatnot there. But Becton's going to be a really good run blocker early on. Interesting because, yeah, Adam Gase doesn't like to run the ball a whole bunch, so maybe this means they want to run the ball more with Le'Veon Bell. We're going to see. I'm not worried about his run blocking at all, but early in his career, 
pass protection could keep him down here, yeah, around the 27 range. Uh, but he'll, he'll develop. He, you know, he'll be better down the line. So a pretty good prospect there. Uh, Riley Reef of the Vikings at 26. Yeah, a guy that's definitely on a decline. Had some good years with the Lions. I mean, he had his moments with the Vikings so far as well. Early last year was solid. Every game you see like wear or I mean he was never hurt but um, you know nothing major obviously but it just seems to decline he just seems to decline over time um, you know it seemed like, seemed like the Viking strong part was the right side of the line just because of the difference in tackles uh, but Riley Reef is definitely a guy and they draft Ezra Cleveland from Boise State it's a pretty good pick and they want to put more strength on him I don't think I think we see Ezra Cleveland start at some point this year. I really think we do. I, I think Reeve starts week one. I think he probably gets majority of the starts. I think Cleveland going, you know, end of this year, going into the next year, is definitely the starter at left tackle. So that's kind of the good thing, you know. Uh, 25, Isaiah Wynn of the Patriots. We've seen him a first-round pick out of, out of Georgia there. Very solid tackle. Uh, very good run-blocking tackle, of course. Uh, coming out of Georgia, and he could still contribute in the run game, of course. Uh, injured, though, before he even started his career in New England, so that kind of set him back. That's kind of been the problem. So, in other words, kind of been trying to get his groove going, been a little inconsistent. So, I think he can actually step up this year. Uh, but, yeah, that's definitely one to look out for. Moving on to the next eight. 24, I got Andre Diller. was a first-round pick last year. He had to play, which was, you know, I hate to say it was kind of expected because Jason Peters last year up there at age continued to get hurt, and, yeah, he did get hurt. So, Diller had to kind of get thrown in there. He kind of struggled, you know, more than you expected. You know, getting thrown in, uh, playing with a good offense line. So it's going to be tough. You know, you expect it's a tough challenge. But he struggled a little bit more than we expected. I think he starts to figure it out. There's some good left tackles. But for now, you know, till we see some more and uh, kind of up in the air because he did struggle a little bit. But I, I definitely expect him to be better. You know, based on that, you would probably put him at the bottom, like very close to the bottom. Uh, but I expect him to pick it up. It's a good, well-coached unit there. Uh, so he'll start to pick it up. Uh, another young athletic tackle there, Colt Miller, drafted a few years ago. was kind of a surprise pick. He actually picked it up last year compared to the year before. It was a complete disaster. Um, you know, and he's kind of just today's mold of, uh, of tackles, today's style of tackles, just athletic tackle there. So I think he can start to pick it up a little bit, still find his way here in the 20s. Nate Solder, uh, interesting with the Giants. It's nothing guaranteed here, but they draft Andrew Thomas, who was a who is a very solid left tackle prospect from Georgia, of course. But – I'm kind of going with, you know, they kept Solder around. They didn't, you know, they didn't, uh, you know, they bring in Thomas. You know, I, I think they go Solder at left tackle. And there was talk pre-draft that Thomas could play right tackle. I think that's what it is. I think they go Solder at left tackle, Thomas at right tackle. Maybe some people think I'm a little bold there. I don't know if that's really bold. They kept Solder around for now. If they, if they cut him at some point here, which they still could, I think it's not really a long shot, but kind of close to a long shot that they cut him. Then we can start talking about Andrew Thomas. He's probably playing left tackle. I believe they brought in Fleming for right tackle, perhaps, but he's more likely a really solid backup. Um, in case Solder's struggling, they can move Thomas to left tackle. It sounds kind of messy, though, you know. Uh, Solder struggled last year. I think it could be a little better this year, you know, as the offense line, as a unit becomes complete. I believe in the unit, you know, playing together. You're as good as your unit. Um, so I, I am ranking Andrew Thomas with the right tackles. That's just I, I think he'll play right tackle. Uh, Solder at 22 here. DJ Humphreys at 21 got a pretty big contract. A little surprising maybe how big it was, uh, but it's so hard to find left tackles that know your you know know your scheme and that you can trust somewhat. So. Um, you know, and still somewhat young, too, so he could continue to improve with the new system that was just new, fresh last year. So they locked him up. Can't really blame him too much. Uh, they kind of just towards the middle of the pack here, and he, he could get a little better here. Uh, a rookie, Jed Jedrick Wills from, from Alabama, now in the Cleveland Browns. Um, I almost I want to put Wills higher. Be why? Because I love Wills as a prospect. This guy's a beast, absolute beast. Uh, he played right tackle. Played right tackle for Alabama. Uh, and I know two was a lefty, so moving the left tackle can help in terms of yeah, knowing where your QB's at, you know, having the eyes in the back of your head. Uh, but there will be a little bit of an adjustment. Not worried at all. If he starts off the year struggling a little bit, um, you know, mainly in pass protection, I would not be surprised, and people should kind of relax. People will probably freak out. Uh, it just kind of starts to get instinctive. When you play right tackle, you continue to play right tackle, your footwork, you know, off the ball, your first move, you don't really think you kind of just do it. So there could be in the lack of practice this season, and he's going to play left tackle because Conklin's got to – I don't trust Conklin at left tackle. Wills is their better tackle for sure. We'll, we'll talk about Conklin with the right tackles. Uh, so he could start off, you know, a little shaky there, but he'll start to pick it up, and this is a – 
I think, a top-tier tackle in the making here for the future. So it's definitely one to keep an eye out for. Speaking of Alabama tackles, you got Jonah Williams, who was their left tackle not this past year, the year before. The Bengals draft him very high. He doesn't play down because he's injured. Uh, so now they get him back. It almost feels like he's a rookie. He was a top-tier offense lineman in that draft class. So hopefully the injury doesn't – that's why I can't really put him higher in this because – Hopefully the injury doesn't affect him. And there was talk about him playing guard. I, you know, they need that left tackle pretty badly. He's had, has experience there, so I think he'll be pretty solid here. I got him around the middle of the pack. Hopefully he's okay. You know, if he didn't get hurt, I expect him to have a pretty good rookie season. Then we can be talking about him maybe even in the top ten. So it's kind of a tough one to rank, but I, I do have high expectations for some of these Alabama guys. Charles Leno of the Bears. Another tough one to rank because you look at two years ago when the Bears played much better, uh, this guy looked like a top 10 tackle for sure. Left tackle last year really struggled. He didn't look like number 18. He looked like the bottom 10. So I went from top 10 to bottom 10. I talk about you're as good as your unit. You know, if your unit starts struggling, you start struggling. I think for the most part, I think really good guys can kind of hold their own. So that could be it a little bit. The unit was a little bit of a mess. They almost had to change blocking schemes at one point. So if you would think they kind of get everything set settled in now, and that could mean he can play a little better. So that's why I kind of have him in the middle of the pack there. Not that top 15, 10 range from two years ago. Not the bottom 10 from last year. You know, a little around this range. Donovan Smith at number 17. I think consistency is the key with him. You know, one week you look like, okay, this is the guy from Penn State we, we expected here. This guy's going to be special. And one week he's really struggling uh, both run and pass protection. You know, he has his bright moments in both, and he has his bad moments in both. Uh, but Tom Brady, you know, the quarterback matters. Obviously, having Tom Brady, having that smart quarterback, um, you know, making the adjustments at the line, I think matters a lot. So I think everything second year with Arians in there, second year with this coaching staff, everything's starting to come together they kind of complete the piece with Tristan Wirfs who will rank with the right tackles of course uh, you know that that makes him better all of that that's a collection of things making him better so I do have him at 17 even though I you know based on the past he probably wasn't at 17 but I don't know if there's anybody that's really below him that was really better than him anyways but so kind of banking on him getting a little better we're on to the big top 16 here I got Deion Dawkins uh, for the Bills at number 16 he's kind of been I mean he was a solid prospect but he's kind of been more impressive than expected there was taught a lot of talk about him playing guard uh, if he were to play tackle would it be right tackle even like would he be able to play left tackle and he's been pretty solid you know nothing crazy but still young still getting better uh, so pretty impressive to say the least Russell Okong at 15 not quite to where he was uh, in, in the past you know which was possibly a, easily a top 10 tackle I'd say uh, and then the injuries you know so a combination of that the you know you almost feel that there's a shot he gets injured which you hate saying and on top of that, when he does play, um, it doesn't seem quite as good as he where he once was. So that's why he's down at 15. You know, pretty big name. We almost expected him in the top 10 based on the past. Uh, but yeah, some concerns there. Alejandro Villanueva for the Steelers at 14. Another one that's we're gonna have a lot of veterans up here that are still good, uh, but maybe not quite as good as they were a few years ago. So they start they're starting to drop down the rankings a little bit. Villanueva, yeah, a couple years ago was easily top 10, uh, but just outside the top 10 now. Uh, there for the Steelers left tackle Eric Fisher uh, yeah another one that has c consistency problems I mean not problems but could be a little better in that department I think struggled early last year I think the playoffs he was led in the entire unit was lights out in the playoffs but Fisher was uh, you know way better there than the regular season so uh, former top pick obviously so yeah just consistency we know he has it in him that's kind of the qu that's kind of the thing with him we know he can be we can, he can be top 10 we know he can do it you know uh, can he be consistent? Can he be better than these players I have ahead of him? Kind of the questions. Uh, number 12 is going to be Andrew Whitworth, another one, a longtime vet. You know, yeah, yeah, he's just not as good as he was like three, you know, two, three years ago. We're talking about top tier tackle. Uh, maybe two years ago, we're talking about top five. If you had, a, you know, maybe around even a, as far as 10, but no, nothing. Anywhere below that. Still got him at 12, though. Just didn't play as good last year. But, again, another where the unit pops up. The unit around him wasn't really helping him. You know, sometimes you're as good as your unit. But it makes sense, though. You know, very much aging. You know, somewhat declining. Uh, the unit around him is not as good. So it makes sense that, you know, maybe not. he's not as good as he was a few years ago. Jake Matthews at 11. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty consistent tackle, I'd say. You know, I think been around these ranks right, right around here, right around 10. 
for quite some time here. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that was a pretty simple one there, him, him around this range. Number 10 is going to be Taylor Decker of the Lions. I think he can still actually get better. You know, he still has his bright moments. Hope he stays consistent. Uh, but I got him cracking the top 10. I think that's a guy that can actually continue to get better still. Uh, you know, st still kind of growing. Dwayne Brown at number nine, you know, another veteran, you know, getting up there in age. And uh, you do worry about the injury for him. And that, that's – it's tough putting him in the top ten when he has the injury concern. But you see the difference when he's out versus when he's in for the Seahawks. Obviously, he got hurt at the end of last year, obviously. Uh, and there's a huge difference. I think people always question the Seahawks' offense line. I question it, you know, especially what they're doing with it. You know, you have Russell Wilson. You have some really good pieces. Get the offense a lot – get, get – Get it together. Get your stuff together. You know, get this offensive line good, uh, and that's the truth. But Dwayne Brown is, uh, you know, by far I think the strong point of that offensive line, that that tackle group for sure, and he's around for a reason. He's got to stay healthy, so he cracks the top ten as well. Next, uh, Laramie Tunsil at eight. They traded a lot for him for a reason. I think the top eight really separate themselves. I think there's a pretty giant difference between the top eight and the rest. It's pretty wild. You know, you see nine to number eight. They're only one spot off, but there, there is a big difference. These are the big boys. These, these, are, these, are, the, these are the ball players here, top eight. Laramie Tunsil, I think, continue to improve. You know, he's, he's with his new team, fresh season here. Um, you know, he's very, very solid. He has some upside, too. So he comes in number eight. I really think these top eight guys are beasts. Uh, seven, Anthony Costanzo, they bring him back. He was actually considering retirement. Um, you know, but he's gonna have two more years left here, which is actually surprising because he's playing at such a high level. Very good unit around him, so he comes in number seven, number six. Um, tough one to rank, Trent Williams. Now with the Niners, big pickup for them. They trade almost nothing for the Tiz Towns, but tough one to rank because you know when we last seen him play full time, you know, a few years ago, I was one of those people that were saying, you know, Trent Williams might be the best tackle in all <clears throat> of football here. I was one of those believers, but the injuries pile up. And then the situation, not really pile up, but they're there. In the situation where he just sits out, you know, rust rust happens. Rust occurs. So uh, will he be that top-tier tackle? It's, it's a tough one to rank. I don't know if anybody's ranking him number one anymore. Um, it's going to be tough to expect that. But, you know, I still expect him to be very solid. He's got a well-coached group here, a really good uh, team around him. So I, I got him at number six. Toronto Armstead at number five of the Saints. I think, you know, somewhat under – I think most people probably have him top five. But I think somewhat underrated because they kind of people kind of view him as just kind of a veteran guy. There's some younger guys stepping up, maybe in the top five. Um, yeah, but it feels like he's been around forever. But you know, he's only what is he 28, turning 29 around there. Um, I think he's probably entering his prime, which is kind of a scary thing. I think a very consistent uh, left tackle. You know, he's not going to give up much pressures at all. Maybe maybe you know very few all year. So I like Armstead there in the top five. We're on to the top four. Uh, you know, these, yeah, again, these top eight guys are so good. I got David Bakhtiari at number four. Um, you know, not as good, I almost said a rough year, but it wasn't really a rough year for him. Just that's how good he was before. You know, he was probably number one for so long. And last year he wasn't, he wasn't the best. You know, he really wasn't, he probably wasn't even number four. Uh, but not that he struggled. So that's why I kind of take back what I said there. You know, what I was going to say was very, very solid for them. Um, you know, I almost thought, you know, he's been the stronger part. I almost thought Balaga was, but when he was on the field was better, which I think he only got knocked out of the Niners game. Um, but he's been holding it down for some time. They trust him with everything. And I expect a little better the year this year, um, which was a solid year again last year. But I got him at number four. Tyron Smith of the Cowboys. You know, as long as he's healthy, this guy's a beast and arguably the best tackle in football, which any of these four guys, you definitely can argue they're the best at, at any point if they're kind of back on top uh, of their game. Tyron Smith, though, is an absolute beast. Everyone knows that. You know, just about staying healthy uh, for him, of course. Top two, I got Taylor Lewan at number two of the Titans. He was actually suspended the first four games last year. What a disaster that offensive line was without him. It was an absolute disaster. You know, an offensive line going into the season – one of the better offensive line in football on paper, and then Luan knocked out of it. Oh, not only do they lose their best, you know, one of their best players, their best off, their best offensive lineman, but a leader in that team. And you saw the difference. And when he comes back in, and everything, everything kind of gets start, it starts to get. He he might even struggle a little bit right when he kind came back in, but everything kind of got together. They you know they got together. And they start balling again, and you know you could see how good he is. And I'd say uh, you know uh, from my non you know. Take away my favorite team. You know, Taylor Lewan is probably one of my favorite players in the league that's not on my team, I should say. I don't know. The guy just cracks me up every time. Anything he says, he just cracks me up. So, 
Uh, he's my number two there. Ronnie Stanley's got to be number, my number one because he's still getting better. That's a scary thing. It was only a matter of time. You know, you've seen him as a prospect out of Notre Dame, a very safe prospect. Um, it was only a matter of time. Uh, until he became a top tier left tackle, and there it is. He, he was a it was a dominant year. Switching the offense up, you know, they had Lamar Jackson playing the second half of the year, uh, the year before, but they weren't really playing the right system. It all starts with the blocking scheme too. They switched to more more man blocking, more of a gap scheme, which, in my opinion, is a lot tougher. There's more just driving, taking your guy and driving him, you know, north and south rather than kind of mirroring, you know, it depends on the player. You know, some's harder for others, the other, you know, others are easier, obviously, but in my opinion, yeah, a tough task and being able to change, and I think being able to be a top-tier guy that's also improving in any type of blocking scheme, you know, I didn't really have to think too much, even though these top eight guys are so close, any of them could be number one at any time. I, you know, I was very confident with Ronnie Stanley number one because he's still like young, getting better, and that was kind of the first year of that system almost to that exact specific scheme. So, I like me some Ronnie Stanley there, number one. Let me know your guys' thoughts. You know, maybe you think you know some of those teams. It's tough. You don't know who's gonna who's gonna start. You know, some of the time. So, I, you know, we'll see. That's gonna be the interesting part. Who's gonna start? What, what spot? Uh, tomorrow we'll do right tackles, which is gonna be Tuesday to seventh. Right tackles will rank. Uh, which is becoming more important because a lot of top-tier pass rushers rushing off that right side uh, the, against those right tackles. So, um, yeah, we're going to rank those. We're going to keep on moving on. Really enjoying this. Hopefully you guys are. If we, hopefully you can smash that like button, subscribe, check out that Twitter uh, link down below for anything that you may need. That's going to do it, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.